Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Two Minute Tuesday. We have a really good one today. This is one of those things that most people don't even know they can do in Dynamics 365. Or some people maybe have seen this button, but they don't really know how to use it. So I felt like maybe I can give you a couple of ideas on how to leverage this functionality. And of course, you saw the name of this video. We are talking about adding a countdown timer into a form and it can be any form in this case as you can see I'm on the lead form because that's the place that I've used it in the past but I've also used it on the opportunity and I've used it in a bunch of custom entities before it works great with pretty much any entity as long as you have kind of a a reason why to use a countdown timer. Now, let me set this up for you. So you kind of understand why am I using a countdown timer on the lead entity in this case. So let's imagine that you work for a business that depends heavily on being timely when it comes to qualifying leads. You want to reach out to them. You want to talk to them. Let's say you get it. Uh, you get that lead from a card at a conference or something like that, a business card or just a contact information. You don't want to wait too long to contact a lead and then have them kind of lose interest on whatever your product, your business, whatever it is that you talked about. So in a lot of cases, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we create some urgency for our users so they can contact you know, contact the lead. So in this case, I will be, um, you know, adding a countdown timer into a lead form. So every time we open a lead, we know we're working against the clock to qualify this particular lead. Now, there's a couple of things that you need when it comes to adding a countdown timer. Uh, one thing that you need is you need a kind of a, a, um, a deadline, uh, or a target to shoot for. So let's say your lead, uh, let's say you want to qualify leads within three days or something like that. Well, you need to have a field in place that is due in three days or something like that. So then the counter, the countdown timer uh, will count backwards against that time. So when it comes to the lead entity, fortunately, there's a couple of fields behind the scenes that are follow-up fields. Now you can use a custom field if you want. In this case, for this example, I will be using one of those out of the box follow-up fields. So I actually added it already to kind of reduce the time this tip is gonna take um, to the contact method section right here. So you see schedule follow-up prospect. Now the idea is that you populate this automatically with a workflow or with flow with Power Automate. So if you create a lead or import a lead, then Power Automate will kick in and we'll set this up to, let's say, 72 hours from now, 96 hours, whatever it is. If you, depending on your business, maybe you want 24 hours or maybe you want a week, no problem. But in this case, you know, that is not the intent of this video. So I'm going to say we need to qualify. Let's give it three days. All right. So the sixth and let's say um, well, let's say 5 p.m. All right. So I'm going to set this up manually. But again, the idea is if you're doing this on an actual project, you want to set this up manually. Sorry, you want to set this up automatically behind the scenes and you might not even have to show the, the value on that field at all. Right? It could be a field behind the scenes populated. If you're already using the schedule follow up prospect, then, you know, get a custom field, a date and time custom field and then populate that because the countdown timer will need that. All right. So that is the first thing you need. You need a date, which is kind of your target. You want to get it done before this particular time. This is your, your deadline. All right. Then the second thing you need is a success condition and a failure condition. Now, fortunately, the lead entity comes with multiple status reasons, just like the opportunity does as well. So if you were adding a countdown timer on the opportunity, you would use the status reasons, let's say won and lost to to signify, you know, whether you successful, you successfully got that done or you lost it and you failed at it. Right now, in this case, the lead entity has also status reason. And you notice that when a lead is open, it's either new or contacted. So when you train your users, you say, OK, I want you to switch that to contacted. Uh, behind the scenes. Now there's another status behind the scenes, which is not on the list, which is not contacted, right? So I couldn't contact them. So once again, you would use automation to say in the same workflow, you can say, wait until this date and then check to see if the status still equals new, if we haven't contacted them. And in that case, with the power automate, you know, flow or with 
the, a workflow if you want to go that route, then you know switch that status from new to not contacted, and that will then make it fail. That would make the time the the countdown timer fail. All right, so that's a long setup, a lot of minutes. If you if you fast forward through this, you just wanted to see the countdown. That's cool, but again, you will need a field which is your deadline plus what are the conditions for failure or success. Now let's go into the form. So I already have it open right here and I'm going to go ahead and open the form editor and I know we're going into the old form editor. It works pretty much the same on the new one. If you want to use that, this environment that I'm using, it actually doesn't have um, the, the, the CDS environment set up yet. So I can even go show you that on the, on the new form editor, but it works pretty much the same way. If you follow the steps, all right, now that the uh, form has been loaded in the form editor, let's start the countdown and let's go, which is kind of funny because we're adding a countdown into this form. So the countdown timer is on the insert tab. So if I go to the insert tab, notice that there's a timer control in here. So we're going to click on that and we're going to give it a name. So in this case, we're going to say uh, contact by or something like that. Now, the first one is the name, so you know you don't want any uh, spaces in there. Or you can say contact deadline. It doesn't matter. You notice that I can make those uh, different if I want to. Now, here is the field that I told you about. This is the failure time field. This is the deadline. And in my case, I'm using schedule follow-up prospect. And then the success condition is that we're actually switching the status reason, as I mentioned before, from new to contact it. If we contacted them before we hit this date, we succeeded. And if we failed, now let's go into status reason. And once again, now we have not contact or cannot contact, right? So this is the status that I'm going to switch it to automatically if I ever reach this deadline. So we're going to click OK. Notice that it gets added into the form. Now you can move it around whatever you want. I'm not going to waste time out of the two minutes that we have uh, in order to update that, let's go ahead and publish and then hit save and close. Now we're going to navigate back into our lead and hit F5 super quick here. I know we're running against time, but there's no trickery in this channel, as you know. And now there you go. So two days, 19 hours, 23 minutes and 24 seconds. That's how much time it is between now and you know, the date that I added in here, the 5 p.m. on 2-6. So that's how that works. Now, let me force a success just so you can see how that looks. So I'm going to say I call this person contact and notice that immediately it switches to succeed it. Now, obviously, if the workflow or the Power Automate flow launched behind the scenes and switch my status to cannot contact, meaning the failure status, the time down will disappear and it will switch to uh, failed. So that is how a countdown timer is used in Microsoft Dynamics 365. I hope you enjoyed the tip this week, and we'll see you next week.